So today we're going to talk about posterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And the critical piece, of course, is the P, posterior. So as opposed to anterior ischemic optic neuropathy, where you have the disc edema that's visible during the acute phase, in posterior ischemic optic neuropathy, the P means that it is a retrovulbar optic neuropathy. And what that means is there's no swelling. This is a very dangerous diagnosis to make because there's so many things that could cause a retrobulbar optic neuropathy that have nothing to do with ischemia. And so before we make the diagnosis of a retrobulbar PION, we want to have clinically confirmation that there's an RAPD. We want to have a visual field defect that is corresponding with a nerve fiber layer loss, or we might have central loss with central acuity and a central scotoma. And the disc has to be normal initially in PION, but over time, the nerve would turn pale. So in some respects, it's a retrospective diagnosis because we have to see the optic atrophy develop in this patient after resolution with a retrobulbar optic neuropathy. And so there are different types, just like non-arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. There's non-arteritic PION, just like non-arteritic AION. And then there's arteritic PION, and then there are things that look like PION, but are really a retrobulbar optic neuropathy, either retrobulbar optic neuritis or a compressive optic neuropathy. So far and away in an elderly patient, you should be thinking about arteritic PION. So non-arteritic PION does occur. Usually it occurs in the setting of surgical procedure like spine surgery or cardiac surgery. They wake up with loss of vision, an RAPD, a field defect, loss of cutie, but a normal nerve, and then it turns pale. In giant cell arteritis, same thing. Elderly patient, acute unilateral loss of vision, RAPD, normal fundus. And a fluorescein angiogram, fundus fluorescein angiogram might be helpful in that setting to look for choroidal perfusion deficit in patient who had PION, because the other retrobulbar forms of optic neuropathy like optic neuritis, MOG, NMO, or compressive lesions would not be expected to have a fluorescein angiogram showing choroidal perfusion deficit. The second thing is you have to do an MRI scan of the head in orbit with gadolinium with contrast and fat suppression because what we're looking for is enhancement of the optic nerve. And so if we see enhancement of the optic nerve, then probably you should not be considering PION. That usually means it's an inflammatory optic neuropathy. And in a young person that's MS, but in an older person, it could still be GCA, but that is when you have to really think, maybe I'm dealing with one of the other optic neuropathies that are antibody mediated, MOG, myelin oligodendrocytic glycoprotein, or NMO, neuromyelitis optica. So the key in differentiating radiographic feature is enhancement of the optic nerve, and you should be thinking about MOG and NMO, and it's especially true if the patient has an other autoimmune disease already like lupus, that means we really should be thinking about antibody mediated and not delayed type hypersensitivity granulomatous causes for the optic neuropathy. So in summary, a posterior ischemic optic neuropathy is a retrobulbar optic neuropathy. It's characterized clinically by acute unilateral or bilateral loss of vision, visual field and a nerve fiber layer defect, an RAPD if it's bilateral or asymmetric, and a normal nerve that becomes pale over time. It can be arteritic or non-arteritic. If you should be thinking about giant cell, then I would do a fluorescein looking for choroidal perfusion deficit. You need to do an MRI scan to make sure it's not some other retrobulbar optic neuropathy. And you should be thinking about MOG and NMO in patients who have an enhancing optic nerve, even if they're elderly patient. And if they're a young patient, regular optic neuritis, MS, MS mimics, and of course NMO and MOG also still in differential. And if everything is negative, then you can make the diagnosis of non artery PION, but that usually occurs after surgical procedures, spine or cardiac surgeon, and I would recommend that a general ophthalmologist not make the diagnosis by themselves of non arteritic PION.